Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Niger Knows. I am Nika. I'm Tori. Yes, and as you can see, we are down two people. Um, Felicia is not feeling well. The allergies are kicking her butt today. Uh, so she is recovering. And then Yijide has some other things going on. Um, so she will be gone for short leave while she takes care of some things. Uh, but she will be back. So for right now, though, you got me and Tori. <laughs> we still good over here, okay? Either way. Um, <laughs> so we just decided to keep it real light. We don't have like a very specific topic that we're talking about. This is getting to know. Getting to know. Because we were recording. Then we stopped. Stopped for a little while. And then we came back. And then we had a new person. So we want y'all to get to know us a little bit. We will, of course, revisit this um, when Felicia is back. But these next couple episodes are going to be me and Tori. Getting to know us. We know each other. But now y'all can know us. <laughs> yeah. <So> I- <laughs> We can make it if we try, just the two of us. You just and the I. two of us. <laughs> just the two of us. Building some gasoline in the sky, just the two of us. us. You you and I. <laughs> uh, so we just came up with some questions and we just going to talk and have a conversation. So y'all know what it's like when we talk to each other. Okay. Um. I'm trying not to cry this time. <laughs> yes, because last time we did cry. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> but you know what? I am really hot, y'all. This uh, perimenopause is kicking my butt. And probably the alcohol oh, doesn't, no. doesn't help. But... Oh, no. It's going to cool me off because I'm sweating. Ooh, I'm under this wig. Okay. Um. So what's the first one you want to do? Ooh, let's start off with, what did we say? What are you most proud of? Okay. Let's start. What are you most proud of? What am okay. I most proud of? Um, I think it sounds really cliche and really cheesy, but my babies, my children, you know, one day I think I'll write a book about my whole experience, you know, but coming from the type of home I was raised in, you know, you definitely don't have babies out of wedlock. That's not what you do. Um, but I did it once, but twice with two separate fathers and my dad's a pastor. So, you know, that was difficult. The first one, of course, but especially because um, I was young. Um, but you know what, despite everything that has happened and the self-doubt and things that have been said to me, I've been called crazy. I've been called all types of stuff, uh, by family, um, during the whole course of all this happening. But when I look at my children and my older one, he's 21 now, I just, I can't help but buff my chest out because I did that. Okay. (laughs) I did that (laughs) despite what everybody said or did, or even how I said it to myself, I did that. And he's. Yes. A nice young man. He's respectable. He's in school working on his degree. So I'm just, I'm proud of my babies. And my younger one, he he different. He different, but I feel like he's the other side of me that, you know, I don't necessarily show as much. But he's so thing. smart. <laughs> You're not going to get to the same thing. No. You got it the first. And you had a nice, calm Joseph for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I said to wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alert. Alert. So he's just a little bit more outgoing, but I just, I just love his spirit. I love that he is who he is. That's my younger one, Caleb. And um, yeah, I'm most proud of my babies. What about you, Tori? Well, the piggy off you, I'm proud of you. So I've known Nikki for a long long minute now. I was, yeah, I was there. I met, when I met you, Joseph was like seven, you know, we found out you was pregnant with with, with Caleb after, after a night out. It was <laughs> I was like, mm. like, we are really, really sick. I know we don't get this sick. No, we only had we can we can throw back drinks, so this is strange. Like <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> it's not added up, but I am proud of you, and I think yeah. you should be proud of yourself. Like watching you just regardless of anything else that's going on, you always just your mom. Like you're you and you've done a really good job of like keeping your identity, mm. but also yeah. being a mom. And I think that's something that's like, that's so, that's really hard to do. Cause yeah. a lot of people get lost in being mom and that's understandable. Cause being a mom is hard. You yeah. got to pop the thing out and then you got to, you know, keep going from there. I guess it's <laughs> stop. And it's like, 
<laughs> you lose, you can lose yourself in that. And I've seen a lot of people lose themselves and they, you know, you ask them about themselves and they have nothing else to say about who they are, but you've always like strive to like keep going, keep trying to like reform yourself, keep trying to like, you know, try this. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna at some point I'm gonna do this. And then you figure out how to do it, you know? And so I think you thank you. That goes along with that. Uh, thank you. So, I won't cry. <laughs> you know. But no, I'm I'm proud of you. And then let's see for myself. I, I'm proud of me. <laughs> you know, yes. Background. I'm actually I'm very proud of me, considering you know just everything that I've I've been through and what I've put myself through. Like from the get go, I left home immediately um, due to you know religion and things like that with my family and having to be by myself for so long. But not letting that keep me down. Like, yes, there's ups and downs, depression and things like that. But even then, it's like, I don't stop. There's always, you know, I love, I allow myself to cry and I just keep going. Like, there, there's nothing ever stops for me. You know, stuff happens and I just keep pushing. And I, I don't, I know I don't give myself enough credit until I stop and like look back. at Calvin. Um, and, and just be like, damn, I did a lot. Yeah. I'm part of myself. I don't be thinking I do anything. But then when I look back and people are like, whoa. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, that's it. And they're like, that's it. And I'm like, yeah, that's it. They're like, that's a lot. That's and it's a like, lot. yeah. You know, I still managed to love myself. It took a little bit to get there, but getting there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. And I, I think you should be proud of you. I'm proud of you. Um, I love that. One of the things I love about you is that you wish I could do is being open and open-minded to things and not scared to try things, new things. Um, I feel like that's one trait that you have that I really like. I wish I could, you know, be like that, just jump in head first and not be scared about hey, what is this? What is this? What is this? You know what I'm saying? Cause that's what keeps me back sometimes. Um, so yeah, I agree. You should be proud of you. You don't give yourself enough credit and, uh, yeah, go girl. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I have a house in 2023. I'm like, okay. Yes. You said you wanted a house and you got it. Period. Right. For anybody that's known me like my whole life, I've never wanted to own a home. Ever. I'm like, oh, I don't want I want I like my maintenance, man. I like my apartment. What I don't want to do yard work. Like, I'm not trying to do all this. I don't want a house, but then a house happened. And I couldn't be happier right. with the to like have a house ups and downs with it for sure you know yeah. you know small tidbit check the ac please before you buy <laughs> child i was over there when the ac wasn't working check your ac okay make, make sure, sure the ac has got some longevity on it at least until you can save up for a new one because not all previous owners take care of the ac unit and when it break down during the summer and you naked trying to put a, a window unit <laughs> Your window, you don't care who see titties, just <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cute look. So smallest tidbit. The AC, like either put out the money for it immediately or make sure that it work all the way. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I I've learned a lot from you and another friend that recently purchased a home in the last year. Like, ooh, let me write these notes down because now I'm finally like you. I never wanted to buy a house because I never saw myself living out my life in the US. I always dreamed of living somewhere else. So it was never really like a thing for me. Uh, but now it's like I'm probably gonna stay here. So let me start thinking. And I've been taking notes from y'all. Like, okay, so let me make sure I check the AC, let me make sure I check this and the permits and all this other stuff. Uh so yeah, I'm I'm proud of you as well. <laughs> gonna be right there with you be like well, what's this? right exactly at least i know i got people i can refer to when that time comes um oh, you know another thing i'm proud of that i have not only a couple people know because i have not talked about it because i wanted to make sure that i actually did it before i actually said it out loud um i got pregnant after my first year of college came home uh and i'm just gonna say i flunked out okay that's what happened um, because I was not going to class. Uh, there's a whole other things behind that, but I was not going to class. So I came home pregnant. That was not a good look and a good, uh, experience for me. 
And I've gone to school and literally got to the end, did the whole senior thing and then stopped, gave myself an excuse to stop, like literally at the end, focused on my children, like whatever. I'll just put that dream aside. But anyway, all that to say, I finally did it, y'all. I went back to school. I'm graduating on June 29th. My official diploma came the other day and I'm so happy. My friends and family are going to be there with me to celebrate. And I have officially been accepted for the master's program as well. So I will be starting that later on this year. That's going to be a year of just straight grinding to get that done. And uh, yeah, that's another thing I'm proud of. Hey. And I was so happy. It was really emotional because... You can get along without one, right? I've I've done fine. It has always been the easiest, but I've done fine. But it was just something that I always wanted. And I just figured, you know, it's never going to happen for me. Um, so when I sent my dad that message and I was like, Daddy, you know, I feel like that little girl inside of me is jumping up and down like, Daddy, I did it. And then he sent me a nice message and I'm on the phone looking at it, crying and everything. So <laughs> it was just a really good feeling. Um, but yeah, that's something else I'm proud of. It can you can do it, y'all. It's never too late. It's never too late. <laughs> really, for it, whatever you want to learn, like yes. it's it's not too late to step through that door. Yes, never too late. Um. So the other thing that we want to talk about and getting to know us. Um. What was the other one we said? Favorite yeah. childhood memory. Favorite childhood memory, and then worst worst dating, dating experience. Um, so what's your favorite childhood memory? Ooh, uh, God, man, I got so many. Oh no. Do you have one on the tip of your tongue? Cause I got to shuffle through some real quick. Well, the first one that comes to mind right away is we, um, I, I grew up most of my life, but part of it in New Smyrna beach, Florida, because that's where the church was that my dad pastored. So we lived in New Smyrna for a while. And, um, we lived really close to the beach, not far at all. So we would sometimes at night go to the beach and walk on the beach at night. You know, the moon is out and the waves are whipping and the little sand crabs are out and stuff. And my parents would be, you know, walking, holding hands, whatever they were talking about. Me and my sister kind of playing on the edge of the waves and stuff like that. And I remember that first because that was the times that I felt like family you know what I'm saying like that love that you want to feel from your family and that's always a really good uh memory for me is those times that we did we did that that's one I, of them I feel like Calvin wants to like hold for yeah he wants to say hi he keep coming around hey Calvin this is her cat y'all for those y'all listening on the it's audio my son. it's my son <laughs> <laughs> no hockey is do right <laughs> As soon as you get on the phone, now they want now they want your attention. Right, you want that <laughs> bigger thing earlier. Here you go. <laughs> See, favorite memory. So I have one. So I am daddy's girl. You know, even though there's religious differences for us, my dad is like my best friend. You know, and when we do get together, we no matter if we mad, if we upset, if we said we just fall into like the same rhythm. Like I have my mom's face, but I have my dad's personality and we chill and we vibe really hard with the same level of like dry jokes. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's just we always had a very like special, special relationship. And my favorite thing that he used to do was on occasion, he would like come wake me up as a kid and I'd like two, three in the morning, wake me up, sneak in my room, wake me up, be like, hey, you want to go for a ride? want to go for a drive? And I'm like, yeah, let's go. And so I would pop up, I make a, a little bag, and then we would be on the road, you know, like to my grandma's house, who was like three and a half, four hours away. She's in like West Palm Beach area, Delray Beach. And we would go from Lakeland and we would jump on Yeehaw Junction, that long, narrow, foggy ass road. And we would just just be on the road. And it was like my favorite. It was my favorite thing. We would stop and we would get the same snacks. I still get the same snacks for road snacks if I go on the road. Same <laughs> exact snacks. The apple Danish. Mm, yes, gummy bear. Those are, that's my favorite. The apple Danish and, and some gummies because I love gummies. It's like favorite. And then like some sort of chocolate and something salty. But always the apple Danish. I still put the apple Danish real hard. But like two, three in the morning, just... 
riding down the road and just singing all kinds of Motown stuff out loud, Otis Redding, you know, just any and everything we could belt out, all temptations, you know, Sammy Dave, like anything, we was just screaming. And then we would drive until the sun came up and we would drive as a, like that was always like my favorite, favorite thing to do. So yeah. it's like I still do that by myself when I travel, but it yeah. definitely stems from like from yeah. that. Yeah, you know, dads are important. Dads are are really, really important. And they can, you know, moms are important too. Obviously, I'm a mom, so I think that. But, like, I don't think that a lot of times men get the credit or get the recognition or the encouragement that they need to be active and be present in their children's lives. Because it really, really does matter. It really does. daddy issues like that? Mm-hmm. Is, yeah, is a is a plus for me, and to be able to recognize that certain mm-hmm. daddy issues I don't have because my dad was very present and was very. We had a great relationship outside of you know that thing at that factor. Yeah, we've, always, you know, we've had a great relationship, and I got to see what it was like to be treated to see to see a man lead and be vulnerable and still provide and be strong but also be soft you know like that to me a soft man sometimes is the strongest kind of man like if you can you know be masculine and be that provider effortlessly but then turn around and not lose that sense of masculinity just because you're being soft with kids or being soft with your child or being soft with your wife or you know and those around you like that to me makes you so much more masculine like It's just like, okay, you can take care of those needs and to watch him do that with my mom and like with with me, it was like, Mm -hmm. that's, that's a, that's a very strong visual that I carry with me, which is why I don't take shit from anybody. It's like, this is not, I feel like me and my dad just over the last few years have gotten closer. Um, but another fond childhood memory I have is like, we lived in Titusville. That's where I was born. Nobody ever heard of that. Titusville, Florida. Uh, if you know Kennedy Space Center, the space program, my mom was a computer programmer for the space program. So that's why we live there because that's where she was. That's where my dad was. That's how they met. Um, but anyway, like I remember we lived in these two story townhomes somewhere in Titusville. What's well, not country? Titusville. Titusville. And <laughs> I remember like I, I how I am. The, one of the reasons that I have to have peace in the house is like I remember like hearing my parents argue. But one of the things that would help me go to sleep is if I knew everybody was in the house and everybody was safe. So I know how his shoes sound. I know how his keys, I can just, you know, distinct that between my mom and my dad, you know? So he would come home from work and me and my sister would be sitting on the steps. We say, daddy. And I'd be like, I think I was probably like three. And he would throw us up in the air and catch us. And I used to like, wait for that. That was like the best thing in the world to me (laughs) when he would throw us up in the air. And I remember one time I was, am I dating this guy whatever and he made a comment and I was just like he asked me to do something that I wasn't gonna do and he was like oh I see I need to train, I need to train you and I was like hold on hold on now I got a daddy because one thing I don't have is daddy issues okay if I need to be trained then I will call my father to train me okay I don't have daddy issues like that maybe you used to messing with some other type of girls that do have or women that do have daddy issues, but this is not one of them. Needless to say, that did not last long because I could not be trained in the way that he wanted me to. So, I like, <laughs> I I do. they're like, oh, you real, you you have a strong will. We'll work on that. I said to make it <laughs> better, stronger, faster. What do we? What do you mean? They nothing to work on. If 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 you feel like I'm too strong for you, then you know mm-hmm. go. Go pick up lighter weights. Like. And the, exactly. And quite frankly, like the way my dad was or is, even though I didn't really like take it in or realize it. And so, cause you know, you have to have your own self esteem. That's why it's called self esteem. When I think about it, like my daddy was like, I'm a princess. That's what he, he, even now he calls me his precious jewel. So you're not going to come over here and just kind of treat me any kind of way. Cause I'm a jewel, honey. This is a diamond here. Okay. And I wish I had, you know not done certain things or realize that earlier but it's a learning lesson but i'm a precious jewel that's what my daddy said and i believe him so you're not right. gonna come over here and play we yeah. got we got precious cargo over here precious merchandise put your hands on me you're not gonna talk to me any kind of way mm-hmm. don't exactly exactly 
Exactly. <laughs> like, the major voice would be, I'm not listening because when I did get in trouble, my dad, his voice would get real low, get real calm, and be like, okay, look, you about to get this whooping. And I'm, t- <laughs> and I'm gonna need you to understand why. And I'm like, but I don't want to understand why. Can't you just yell at me and like spank me and just go? <laughs> like, and that's how I am now with, with anybody when I communicate. I'm like, you know, and if my, even my niece and nephew, when I'm fuss, fussing at them, I don't yell. I've never yelled at them. I'm like, all right, look, make sure y'all can understand me. And I'm look y'all in the face. I'm not going to yell at y'all, but I'm going to need you to understand me. I'm going to need you to respond to me. Hear me real well. <laughs> and they're like, mm-hmm. okay, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, and men the same way. I'm like, I'm not gonna. You're just not gonna get me there. Yeah, my yeah. face looks as is because you're just not gonna get me there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the other thing that we were gonna talk about, we got a few questions, but the last one we're gonna talk about is our worst dating experience. We gonna keep it short for y'all because this could take a while. Because I got a few, but. Worst dating experience. So, Tori, what about you? What's what's your worst? At least one of the worst, maybe. I don't know what would be number one on your list. Oh, I got number one. So, <laughs> I am all about everybody keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands to yourself unless I give you consent and permission to put your hands on me in a certain kind of way. Otherwise, keep your hands to yourself. If you get mad, go and take a you know and I was when it was like around when I first moved to Tampa I was eight, no I was about I was in Tampa for a while so I think I was around like 20 21 ish went on a date with the guy we were out in Ebor and I I couldn't be decisive that day like I couldn't I didn't know what I wanted and I sent that poor waitress back <laughs> four five times <laughs> do you know what you want mm-mm like and I just and I don't know why I couldn't be decisive that day. I just could not. I I I I couldn't pull it together. And I'm sitting there. And the last time the lady comes, I was like, I'm so sorry. I I still need another minute. Now that man reached out and snatched up my arm. Ooh. Like and not like you need some. No, he was upset and agitated. And the way that he snatched my arm, I don't like people touching me mm-hmm. like that. Let's, I'm very touchy feely, but that's only if I I like you and I'm comfortable with you and I'm all over I'm all over you. But if I don't know you like that, I don't touch me like that. And the way he snatched at me was just like a reaction. I took the fork and just and if police and stuff was allegedly, allegedly, <laughs> I took the fork. It was just the fork was right there, and I just took it and I just stabbed it in his leg. Ooh. I hope he still got scars from it and I was like let go of my arm you know let it go and I just I got up and walked right and I was like good luck worse I mean talk about like you know obvious red signs but like don't do that but don't don't put your hands on people everyone keep your hands to you even if it is aggravated as hell because I was I will say I was being aggravated as hell, but by no means do you grab a grown a grown woman like a child and snatch my arm up. Right. No, not at all. Yeah, he should have got stabbed with that for because sir, what are you doing? Uh don't touch me. Yeah, I'm the same way. Don't don't unless I ask you, don't don't touch me. Don't don't do that. Um, my worst dating experience, I mean, I've had a few bad ones. The one that comes to my mind right away it was more of like a well I was embarrassed and it was a principal thing now this was someone that I was already dating for a while so it wasn't like a first date or nothing like that like we were together I guess whatever I didn't even like to claim or even say that I was with that person but I was okay when I start talking about it you gonna know who I am but I ain't gonna be I ain't gonna say his name um so anyway we went out you know things have been a little rough and I was you know hey, look, I'm feeling like this is not going to be working. And he, you know, reached out like, hey, I really want to try. Let's go out. Let's go have dinner. Let's talk and let's try to reconnect and rekindle, you know, the reason that why we, you know, liked each other in the first place. So I was like, all right, cool. So we go over to, we was, I was living in Tampa at the time. We go over to 
where do we go that day? Bahama Breeze. So if you go in in Tampa, uh, I forget the name of the road going towards Clearwater. Uh, rock, oh. rock, rock something. Not Indian Rocks. I almost said Indian Rocks. Um, okay, but it's right on the water as you're going across the bridge before you get on the long bridge to go over to Clearwater. So on that side, there's like hotels. I think there's a resort maybe. Um, it used to be Hogan's. What's the name of the place? Whiskey Joe's. It's across from Whiskey Joe's. Yeah. So the Bahama Breeze is across from there. It sits on the water. You can sit outside, see the water. So we sat outside. You know, it's a nice setting, blah, blah, blah. I'm all like semi-excited, like, okay, you know, we're going to rekindle. We're going to try this because I was really, I'm a long-term relationship type of person. I don't like the in and out. You know, I've done the whole dating multiple people. Like, I just rather be in a relationship, honestly, or just by myself. Like, I just rather not be bothered, which is the phase I'm in right now. But anyway, we get there, you know, we're talking and, you know, trying to work things out, whatever. I'm ordering, you know, my drink. Oh, I want the Oysters Rockefeller because Bahama Breeze does have some really good Oysters Rockefeller if they still sell it. I don't know, but they're really good, at least at that particular location. I'm like, let me get this, my dinner, whatever. He's ordering his food. So we're talking and I don't even know how it came up, but somehow during the conversation, we start talking about paying for the dinner. And he was just like, oh, but I haven't gotten paid yet. You, you're going to pay for it, right? Cause I don't get paid. And I was just like, hold on. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Sir. Now, why would you ask me out to dinner and then you don't have money to pay for it? You didn't say, no, you didn't say anything up front. Right. Because I would have said, no, number one, we'll do it when you have money. Number two, it was, I want to get into details. It was an ongoing thing with the whole money thing. So he gets upset. Because he didn't like how my face looked when I said my comments to him, which they weren't rude or anything. It's a fact. Why would you ask me out if you don't have money? Now, how I am, I don't order nothing. It don't matter first day. I don't order nothing I can't pay for myself. I don't order nothing that, um, you know, I always make sure I have enough money. That's what I mean to say. I always make sure I have enough money to cover myself, possibly two people. That's how it is now after this date. But I can definitely cover myself. If I don't have money to cover myself, even if I know you're going to pay for it, I'm not going to go because I got to, I always got me, you know, I don't got you, but I got me. So, you know, I made my little comments and he literally gets up and walks out. So I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, maybe he's just going to the bathroom because he was a little upset, whatever. Time is a ticking. Time is a ticking. Food comes out. Main dish comes out. Where the hell do you go? Like, it's a long time. You know, men, they just pull it out, pee, and then come back. So right. I, I text, like, call. Yeah. Where are you? Oh, I'm in the parking lot walking around. Why? He comes back in. Well, I didn't like your face. Um, you know, how you said it looked like you were really disappointed in me and I didn't like that. And this was a manipulation tactic that he used to use on me all the time. And I knew it, but I was still like, go with it, whatever, to now make me essentially feel sorry for him so that then I would go ahead and pull my wallet out and pay, which of course I did pay because I wasn't going to, you know, walk out and yeah. build nothing like that. Right. When I tell you I was pissed, Probably he pissed, because A, why would you ask me out to, to me? If you're a man and you know the woman you're dating is a single mother, why would you do that? Like, you know she has other obligations, right? So why would you even do that? Or at least verbalize it before, like, hey, I ain't got the funds, but I want to go out. Because maybe I don't have compassion on you that day. I'm going to say, all right, cool. But don't try to, like, count my pockets or know what I have when, when, when you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not paying my bills. Because I'm still paying my, my, my bills. So you don't know what I got going on. Thanks. That's just rude. Like, I was fussing all the way back. <laughs> fussing <laughs> and everything. Like, that was a horrible experience. And after that date, although I kind of had the rule anyway, I always make sure if I'm going out with somebody, I got enough to cover two people. And I'm mm -hmm. never going to ask to go somewhere or order something that I cannot afford or I wouldn't buy for myself. That's with food, with anything. I'm not going to ask you to buy me a freaking Birkin bag if I wouldn't buy that for myself. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I am because I always got to have me i remember i was talking to somebody else and he mentioned i was like hey look i'm okay with paying for myself if we if that's what you want to do but you gotta have you hey, you gotta take care of you at least take care of yourself at minimum if we're gonna go half and half take care of your half like, right. like right. especially if you have, like it's one thing to like if i've asked men if they want to go out to eat and and because i asked i paid mm -hmm. that's not a problem 
But if you go out of your way to ask me to go somewhere, the assumption is you're going to pay for it. Especially in this case, we it's not like it's a first date type of deal. Like we are already in it for at that point a couple of years. So what are you doing? You know how I am. You know at this right. point. Child. Yeah, one more quick one. Go There's ahead. a guy that yeah, asked me to come over for dinner, you know, and I was like, okay, cool, that's fine. You know, I could do that. Went over for dinner. And immediately, first of all, he, strike one, while I was on my way over, he's like, oh, okay, you're on your way. That's why he's like, but before you get here, make sure that you put on something nice. First of all, I always look nice. I always look nice. But even if I didn't want to look nice, you don't get to dictate that. Like, you get what you get. <laughs> but this is a date. So I was like, whatever. So I was like, I kind of like laughed it off, but like mental no. And I was like, all right. Then I get to his place. He ain't even home. Oh, yeah. Sure. Well, I, was like, I went to the store to go grab some stuff. I was like, you need me to come back? Leave? No, no, no. You stay right there. Don't, you know, and you just stay there. I'm trying to move. Okay. I'm really, maybe because he's from up north, a little more, you know, the, the word, a little more bitey. Mm -hmm. I'm a southern girl, so maybe it's just, you know, Cultural different thing. Yeah. Cultural difference, probably. So then he finally gets there. <laughs> we walk in and he goes, all right, make sure you take your shoes off and go wash your hands. Yeah. Not you being my daddy. <laughs> and so he's like asking me all these questions and we're talking. You know, I can talk like I can go, you know, and, and joke and laugh and stuff. And so we're sitting and I'm eating and he's asking me questions and I'm talking. But I'm not going to talk while I got food in my mouth. So I'm talking. He's just like, hey, hey. He's like, I'm going to need you to stop talking and eat your food. See, that's where my eye would have started really twitching. Right. I said, excuse me? He was like, you you, you talk a lot. You talk too much. So I'm going to need you to, to. I was like, I'm going to talk as much as I want. I was like, I'm either going to talk or I'm not going to say anything at all, which you don't want. And I know how to feed myself. I was like, I'm straight. You want me to finish my story, sir? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nah. I'm, hey, I'm, when they start going into, I'm a real digger. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mm -hmm. high value, high, high me alpha male. But let, 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 let. I want, I want to sit with. Like. I, want, I, want, I need somebody that's not worried about optics. I need somebody that's so sure of themselves. That all of that just exudes off their body naturally. The moment that you got to tell somebody that you are alpha male, you ain't an alpha man. Mm -hmm. You got tell me you ain't it. Yeah. I don't want the more like sought after like Sigma type man that's that's not worried about everything else. He's a leader in his own right out there. But that person not going to say that. Mm -hmm. And then he told me, he said it again. He was just like, your food going to stop talking and eat. I need you to eat. I said, you got no more time to tell me to stop talking to eat my food. You know, that's that's who it was. He was like, oh, yeah, well, you real strong. We 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 going to fix that. Sure. I said, fix what? I said, you know what? Thank you for the microwave dinner. I'm going to go. <laughs> Like I'm a I'm a go since you you know since I'm talking too much for you and I'm not recognizing your faux alpha you know rat mink coat kind of feel personality I'm good I'm a go I'm a go <laughs> like, so I just I love yeah. uh, don't do it man just be who you are and let your let your energy speak for itself don't you don't don't claim nothing because then at that point you're just trying to prove it to yourself and that uh, right. uh, yeah. I feel like, yeah, that it's just a reminder that story reminds me why I stay in the house by myself because I'm realizing, especially as I'm getting older, A, I don't have the desire to, you know, they say date multiple people. I don't have the desire to do that. Then B, it seems like some of these conversations, and I, I blame social media in part. I'm an alpha. I'm a distant. Even the women. I'm a bad man. I'm a boss. Like, oh my God. Can we just be? Can I just be? And who I am is gonna show because I'm just being you. Won't, I won't have to bark it at you, tell you. I can tell you what I like and what I don't like, that type of thing. But who I am as a person, as a whole, my character, you're gonna see that from me just being. 
You know, I don't have to say, hey, I'm really smart. I'm just going to talk and you'll be like, oh, dang, she's smart. You know what I'm saying? So, right. I can't. <laughs> I have so many. We could talk for days. I got plenty of the worst or bad dating experience. One I'll say real quick. I know I've talked about this before. I think way back when we first started, we talked was talking about dating. So anyway, dude, low key, if I'm going to be honest, I was, I don't want to say it was a pity date, but it was a date to make sure that my connection was strong so that when I go to the mechanic shop, I don't have to pay for my stuff because I went to go get my car fixed. And he was just like, oh, yeah, I'll fix your oil change. Don't worry about it. Yeah, here's tires. Don't worry about it. So, you know, I feel like I should go out with him. <laughs> you know, no, he's active, though. It wasn't like he was ugly. He was just a little short for my taste. But he was attractive, very good looking, a little bit older than what I would normally do. But for his age, I mean, he was, he was good looking. He was just a little small. So anyway, you know, I should have known. Like you said, that first indication is... Because he calls, he's like, hey, listen, you know, I knew he had a child, a daughter who was um, uh, physically and mentally disabled. So she has to be taken care of. She can't be just left. You know, you can't just leave her anyway. It's like, he's like, hey, you know, get my daughter situated with the babysitter. And um, I'm going to call a cab to meet at wherever we were going. Alarm bell went off, like calling a cab. First of all, you work at a mechanic shop. You were a mechanic. How you not have a car? Like, you know how to fix them. I don't understand that, but not my business. You gonna, you gonna need your car. Maybe your car in the shop. I don't know. <laughs> like, okay, that's fine. So I go ahead and go to the place at the time, you know, get there a couple minutes early. I'm sitting in my car, 30 minutes past. Again, if I'm being honest, this was me trying to make sure I still had my hookup at the shop. Because normally, if I got to wait more than 10 minutes, I'm out. Like, I'm not, I'm not waiting. Like, you're not going to have me waiting when you ask me out. Like, that's just not going to happen. But I waited 30 minutes. I'm literally pulling out like, hey, man, I'm leaving. No, no, no. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. All right. I turn around. Go back in the parking lot. He pulls in like maybe 30 seconds later. He's like, yeah, I'm at the front. I go around. He's sitting there, him and his daughter. So I'm like, oh, hold on now. You know, I'm a mom. So I, I'm, you know, careful about. People meet my children, you know, well, you know, I don't have people at my house. Like, I don't, I don't do that. Um, so his daughter's there. I was like, oh, okay. She was probably like maybe eight or nine. And when I say she was like mentally, physically disabled, like severely, she wasn't in a wheelchair, but she couldn't really speak very well. He could understand her, but I couldn't. So it was like very awkward. Cause like, oh, okay. So your daughter is here. This was a first date. Like, oh, this is weird. Anyway, we go inside she says to him that she has to go to the bathroom. I get it. You're in a public restroom, so you can't walk into the woman's bathroom, but you got to figure something else. He asked me to take her to the bathroom. Of course I do. But to me, it's still very weird because I don't know this child. And to me, that sends off what you just let some lady that you just don't even know, take your child to the bathroom. And right. I know people tend to, tend to be more trusting of women, but women are crazy too. And they do nasty stuff too, to children. So it's just like, mm -hmm. just throwing your kids to yeah yeah I, mean, I, I like to think that i give off a trusting energy and all that stuff but still that's like uh so you know she was able to take care of herself so i didn't have to go in the stall with her or nothing like that so anyway we go she wants to order her own food the waiter god rest god bless his, his heart he was trying his best to understand her finally he interprets so she's sitting there she wanted to sit next to me that's fine i still have to kind of temper my conversation because there's a child present you know so she's eating and she couldn't re really hold the food in her mouth. Like I said, she was disabled a bit, but she's trying really hard and it's just leaking down her face. And to me, it's just like, I can't just sit there and just let her slob on herself, you know? Hey, let's just, do you mind if I take a napkin? No, no, wipe her mouth. So I wiped it. Sweet little girl. She was trying her best and she was talking to me and he was telling me what she was saying, whatever. But afterwards, I was just like, I'm sorry. I think you're a nice guy, but I just can't. I, I I can't. And I've, of course, lost my hookup because when I went back, I had to pay. <laughs> I had to pay for my stuff. <laughs> but it was like, I had to lose the connection because I just, nah, you don't have a car. The whole daughter thing is just weird to bring on a first date, but that's not an issue necessarily because I got children or I just won at the time. But I can't be picking yeah. you up. Because yeah. he did ask me to pick him up. That was the other part. 
he did ask me to come pick him up and I refused and that's when he said he was going to get a cab. Anyway. I, yeah. Yeah. Preferences. <laughs> yes. Definitely. Preferences. Oh, I mean, what that brings us to the end of all of our questions today. But of course, it's always nice to to talk to you, Fran. Yes, of course. And we're going to put all of our social uh, media stuff up here. We're going to be back with another episode. Um, I've said it several times. We record two in a day. So this next episode, you're going to see just me and Tori again. But Felicia will be back on the next one. Uh, so make sure y'all like, share, comment, subscribe. All that good stuff. People have been, you know, slowly starting to comment and getting a couple DMs. Hey, go leave it on the post. So they, you know, have been commenting on the post on Instagram or YouTube, whatever. So we really appreciate y'all. We are growing slowly but surely. Um, and we'll be back. We'll be back, guys. Ask us questions too. If you think of a question that you want us to answer about yeah. ourselves, you know, drop yeah. it, drop it. You got questions or you want follow-up answers. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely. If there's something y'all want to know about us that we haven't thought about or talked about, let us know. All right, y'all, that's all. Peace out. <laughs>